Good morning students, I hope you are doing really well today. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the PowerPoint um, presentation that is examination based for the Diploma in Education Secondary for uh, Life Skills 2. My name is Anne-Marie Stienkamp and I am the tutor for this module. All right, uh, we're going to jump right in there and move on to look at the different units that you have in your study guide. Um, you have five units in your study guide where unit one examines the content about teaching of family life aspects. Unit two looks at the, um, analyzing the content about the teaching of financial orientated issues. Unit three, we look at teaching of self-awareness and emotional intelligent, intelligence elements. Unit four looks at the content about teaching of relationships and unit five about the teaching of a democratic citizenship. Okay, so for this um, subject, Life Skills 2, it is expected that learners at the end of, of the um, studies will be able to examine the, examine the content about teaching of family life aspects, be able to analyze the content about teaching of financially orientated issues. Also examine the content about teaching of self-awareness and emotional intelligence, as well as relationships and teaching about democratic citizenship. So we're just gonna move on from there. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of background or information on how you will be um, working on your assignment. So this is very important to take note of. I'll be naming things on assignment and examinations. When you write your examen, assignment, make sure that you write or type on one page um, to make the marking easier. If you are using a computer, read through all your work carefully to make sure that you did not make any spelling or grammatical errors. Separate the pages, um, staple the separate pages of the assignment in the left-hand right, left corner. Clearly number the, the questions and subsections, as well as the pages. We constantly get um, assignments that don't have any page numbers, and this can create a lot of problems and complications when marking. Write the title of the assignment on the cover page provided by IRL. Clearly write your name and subject code on the cover as well. Do not staple different assignments together. And follow the instructions, which is on um, the assignment when it's sent to you on the first page. Very important. It's very clear when students have not read these instructions. So you will be provided with an IOL cover page. It is expected that you make a table of contents for your assignment. It's expected that there's an introduction and a conclusion to your assignment. The introduction is in the beginning, the conclusion is um, at the end of the assignment. So after the assignment content, you have your conclusion, and then also your resources or bibliography. So everything that you have used, internet resources, other books, as well as your study guide, it is important to put that in your bibliography. Right, we talk about plagiarism, and this is where the bibliography also comes in. If you do not cite where you got your information from, it is considered plagiarism. Students tend to copy and paste answers directly from the study guide into their assignments, um, which means they have not really read, and we are not sure if they understand. Plagiarism is considered a crime, and if you go and read in your study guide in the first pages, introduction, you will see that severe actions can be taken against you because of plagiarism. So make sure you are very aware of what plagiarism is. For the examinations, it's important that you go through this um, presentation. Please do understand that I only touch on certain aspects that are related to the examinations and assignment. So you need to go and read your entire study guide to be up to date. Be very clear on what questions ask. 
This is another big issue um, in exams and assignments where it's clear that students do not understand what is meant by explain, list, criticize, summarize, compare, be sure, make sure that you read the beginning parts of your study guide in which these verbs are explained. They are marked differently, so uh, marks are assigned according to the verbs as well. So it's a different level of thinking that needs to take place. You will be penalized if you do not ask what the question, um, do not answer what the question is asking. Write clearly um, so that one can read. Marking is done holistically. In other words, even if some information are not in your study guide but is still relevant to the question, then you will get marks for that. Okay, so when we move on to Unit 1, we will look there at the social influences on gender roles. In other words, what do society um, tell us about being male and female? As we can see in the little picture there, there's some very clear um, differences between what is expected from women and what is expected from men. So the influences that include these, uh, that influence these gender roles is the values that a society has, the norms, traditions, morals, attitudes, and beliefs. The di different gender roles that we have in families, um, also pertaining to males and females. Males are normally seen as nurturers, uh, females are normally seen as the nurturers, the, to has to do the mothering, cleaning, cooking, and preparing um, while they look after each, others, after each other. Um, males tend to be dominating and take on a stronger role, um, where they are seen as those that need to make money, protect the family, and go out to work to provide for the family. So that is the traditional role that we have for males and females. Um, these roles can be seen as far back as the beginning of the first form of social life. Men will go out hunting while women would stay behind. Um, men were food suppliers and physically fit, where females were homemakers and they cook. The general roles were needed in order for basic societies to survive. Gender roles in families are typically defined by the social and cultural norms of a society that we live in, and the roles help family to fulfill their responsibilities, and any changes to these roles can affect the family and its functioning. All right, we move on to some ways um, in which learners and yourself um, can show respect towards others. So respect is shown through um, behaviors such as not insulting people or making fun of them, to value another person's opinion um, in a true sense, to be considerate to, towards people's likes and dislikes, not everybody is the same, not to mock or tease people, not to talk behind their backs, gossiping, and to be sensitive to their feelings, and not to pressure someone to do something that he or she does not want to do. We move into reasons why some marriages fail, and that can have a lot to do with values, where people's values, the partner's values are different, the motives, motives for being in a marriage are, um, differs, selfishness might occur, circumstances, so that can be any type of circumstances, events that may have happened, um, personalities, where people's personalities just simply clash, uh, money, as well as sex. So it's important that you go and read up further in your study guide under these different headaches. Right. Okay, we move on to advantages and disadvantages of having a small family. So you will also see in your study guide, there's also the advantages and disadvantages of having a big family. So when we have a small family, some of the advantages can include that parents have enough time and to give attention to all of their children. So they will have more attention 
children will receive more attention when we are in a, a sorry in a small family. Uh, finance, financial costs will be less for the family and more opportunities in terms of education and sport will be available. There's less chance of conflict and rivalry. Parents have a better quality of life. There's less strain on mothers, less health risk for the entire family and high levels of education because of financial ability. Some of the disadvantage of having a small family can be that parents become overprotective over their children. They might be overly attentive and the child can become extremely attached to parents. This can cause that children will not be well-rounded, they can become selfish and they don't learn responsibility. They may feel lonely and they also tend to have higher egos, which does, which does not necessarily work in favor of them. Corporal punishment is another very important aspect in your study guide in Unit 1. As we know, the Child Care and Protection Act of 2015 came into um, action last year, so corporal punishment is considered a crime. What it involves is when actions against the child is taken in terms of hitting, squeezing, dragging, slapping and spanking. Um, it does not achieve any real positive results and can cause both psychological and physical harm. It is often used as a weapon of power and easily be abused. Where the main thing why it does not work is that children do not learn to deal with certain aspects. The way they learn to correct behavior is through violence. We move on to Unit 2, and there we're going to look at the implications of growing in unemployment in Namibia. As we know, especially as a result of the current pandemic that we are facing, unemployment rates has very much gone up due to the impact on our financial situation in the country and across the world. Um, <coughs> so some of the implications of unemployment is that one can feel lost, angry, listless, and depressed. It can lead to a sense of failure, low self-esteem, and desperation to provide for your family and for basic survival. There are different types of unemployment. Uh, it's called frictional unemployment, structural unemployment, cyclical unemployment, technological unemployment, classical or real wage unemployment, and seasonal unemployment. Please be sure that you read up on what these different types of unemployment mean. We move on to what the main motives of people on earth are supposed to be. So there's a certain expectation around what the motives of our reason being on earth um, is to be. So some mentioned in your study guide include that one should realize one's potential, potential and ideals, to achieve biological perfection, to seek wisdom and knowledge, to do good, to do the right thing, um, to make meanings re related to religion, to love, to feel, to enjoy the act of living, in other words, experiencing life fully, and to have power and to be better. We look at how the introduction of career and vocational um, education in secondary schools can address unemployment, uh, the unemployment problem in Namibia. So here we look at um, how teachers can assist students when it comes to career choice in their futures. So they need to be able to draw on a range of responses in the life skills classroom because they never quite know what is going to happen. So when learners are talking about unemployment, and we look at careers and vocations in, in um, Namibia in your classroom, it might happen that the discussions might become heated and very times uh, um, it can be taken very personal and it's important for the teacher to handle the situations 
um, very carefully. So they need to contain the space, keep the space for the learners. Um, teaching career and vocational education in, in a school setting helps the learner to prepare for the reality of getting into university or college. The reality of trying to find a job as well as employment. The guidance are not limited to just um, employment, but also helps the learners to realize their own potential and what they can achieve. So this has a lot to do with taking them through the processes of where they know who they are, what they want, where their skills and values in terms of future careers and vocation lies. And there the life skills teacher plays an extremely important role. Okay, the steps one can take in terms of um, keeping a record of income and expenses, so we're looking a little bit at financial um, training here, where we teach learners to look at their finances and to manage their finances in future. So just by using a simply, simply a pen and a notebook that can be done is to look at the assessment of um, your money matters, what do I have there, uh, to set the goals, what do I want to do with my money, to create a plan, to execute the plan and make adjustments. Right. We move on to Unit 3 where we're going to look at the Human Needs Model of Maslow. As we know, it's a five-tier model that, uh, as you can see in the image there, is in a triangle or pyramid. And it is a lot to do about how we understand people's motivations. Uh, Maslow believed that we all have a set of motivations that we want to achieve, um, where some are more important than others. But to achieve this, we need to have certain aspects of life dimension and needs in life in place. So when we look at the bottom, we see physi physiological needs. Those has to do with water, um, food, warmth and rest. So it's basic needs that we have. There are safety needs on the second tier. That includes security. Am I living in a safe neighborhood? Do I have a house? Do I feel safe in the house? Do I feel safe at school? The third one is about belongingness and loving love needs. So that's more to do with the psychological part of a person. Here we have intimate relationships, friends, can be parents, um, teachers, anything that, that shows you you belong somewhere and that you are loved. The fourth tier has to do with esteem needs. In other words, to experience that feeling of accomplishment that boosts your self-esteem and confidence. The last tier um, is about self-fulfillment. In other words, each person has their own idea of what they want to, to achieve one day. Um, and they work towards that goal to become more self-actualized. Related to this motivation, is the characteristics of a person with a high emotional intelligence. They are able to express their feelings clearly and directly with three word sentences that begin with I feel. So it's I feel happy, I feel unhappy. Um, they do not disguise their thoughts or feelings um, as they use the words I feel like um, things are not right or I feel like I can really achieve something in life. They're not afraid to express these feelings um, and not dominated by negative emotions such as fear, worry, guilt, or shame. There are many uh, negative emotions that one can mention there. They are also able to read nonverbal communication. So in other words, body language. Um, they have the ability to pick up what other people might be feeling or thinking when they look at them. So very much aware. When we come to motivating learners in life skills class about the importance of the life skills subject, I'm going to read this quote from your study guide because it brings it perfectly together. So it says, life skills are the strategies, techniques and approaches all people use 
to survive and thrive in, our, in their everyday experience. Some of us acquire these life skills without even thinking about it. When we learn from our parents and loved ones, we watch other people go about their daily routines and we perfect our own skills by trial and error. For others who might not be as privileged to have a good role model, life skills may not come easy. We, I mean, they might struggle uh, to simply figure them out. They might feel as though no one uh, was or is patient enough to show them the way. Children like adults can vary a great deal in their ability to pick up life skills. By teaching life skills in the classroom, we help even to even the playing ground and set children up for success in their own lives. So that is very much what life skills is about. It's about setting children up for success in the future. We move on to unit four, where we look at um, the importance of selecting decent friends rather than popular ones. So this is also a very important topic that needs to be discussed in the life skills class. Um, when hanging out with the social crowd can be very uh, rewarding to a young person, but it might not be emotionally rewarding as much as it is socially rewarding. Popular friends can be fun to have um, and they can help to get you in all to in all the right help to get you into all the right places um, and make connections with all the right people but the big question at the end of the day is it, whether they are there for you when things fall apart so in other words aspects that you need to look at as a learner in terms of your friends do you have friends because you want to be popular or are they friends that there is a deep quality to or high quality. Are they sharing and caring? Or is it just a social following? Are they acquaintances or real friends? Are they caring involved in this relationship, honesty and motivation? So <coughs> coming to the little picture there, that it says good friends are like diamonds, precious and rare. So these days it's very difficult to find good friends. If you do have a good friend, hold on to that good friend. When it comes to relationships, again, we look at uh, the dangers of dating websites. Um, online, um, these days, you will see maybe in the papers and on the news, is that online sexual exploitation and abuse is coming more to the forefront. So this relates very much to the, the dangers that young people can find online. So as a teacher, it would be very important for you to discuss this with your learners, to find out on what websites they normally go, uh, what are the implications and the dangers of these different websites and pages. So when we look at uh, some of the dangers, Yes, there might be distance um, that can be wonderful to meet a person that might be living in another country. Uh, the danger here is that you don't really know where this person comes from. You cannot know whether maybe the picture they sent you or the person talking to you is really the person that they portray, portray to be. Um, some stigma. There is stigma attached to some dating websites um, that they might be a little embarrassed. Do make sure that it is the website you are on is legit um, and be honest about it. The safety around this, some of the things I mentioned right now, you don't know where this person comes from, you don't know if they are being honest. Um, so sometimes predators go onto dating websites um, to find um, easy victims. The costs involved in dating, dating websites, many of them have costs involved. So you also need to be careful there. If these websites ask for money, there might be uh, fees involved that might be subtracted every month and you might not easily get out of that. Okay, um, 
we go on to psychological damage of teen pregnancy. As we know, especially during the COVID lockdown restrictions this year, um, where learners were at home, there has been a dr dramatic and drastic increase in teen pregnancies. So one of the, uh, the damage that it can cause here for the girl who is pregnant is that she might go into denial. In other words, she does not really accept the fact that she is pregnant and therefore she will not make use of medical care, which is so important during pregnancy. Um, she might become self-obsessed. In other words, her focus is only on the pregnancy, only on being a mother. Feelings of guilt that may lead to psychological issues and which may lead to the necessity of counselling. The girl's self-esteem might be affected and she may feel ugly, fat or unwanted. Now we're going to look at uh, Unit 5, which has to do with the content and teaching about dem democratic citizenship. So there are certain characteristics of being a responsible democratic citizen. Some of them include, and please again go and read in your study guide, because there are many more, is that a democratic and responsible citizen um, are able to help people resolve conflict in their own family and community. So in other words, they don't stir for violence, they try to keep the peace. They have integrity, they can be trusted, they are dependable people and they live a healthy lifestyle. They also have a very keen awareness of their social and environmental issues within their communities, in their country as well. Before um, throwing a house party, so this is some advice you can give to your learners, especially the older ones who may tend to have house parties. There are certain tips that you can give them to make sure that when they do have a party at home with their friends, that they do it in the right way, as not to cause any complications or any troubles with the law or with their neighbours or with the community that they are in. So it's good to let the neighbours know if you're going to have a party. You make the party entrance only by invite, so don't make it like a public or open party. You don't know who will turn up. Um, don't advertise your party on Facebook or on Twitter. Be clear about a starting and finishing time. This is very important, otherwise your friends and people might think the party is the whole night long and <coughs> this might create problems for you. State on the invite if the party is alcohol-free and hopefully if you are under 18, it will be alcohol-free. Ensure all valuables are locked away and that you have access to a phone during the event. And your parents obviously do need to be informed about the party. We come to the last parts of Unit 5, and here we look at the disadvantages of a democracy. So some of the things that, that might work um, negatively in a democratic country is that it can allow for public funds um, and time to be misused. Uh, corruption can take place, wrong choices and risky business, and also for people to have the right not to vote. Lastly, sustainable natural resources are as follow. So we look there at water, the sun and wind energy, air, climate and land. So there's a nice picture that shows us some sustainable natural resources. Some recycling facts. More than 60% of the rubbish that ends up in trash bins can be recycled. Around 16% of the cost of a project, product is spent on its packaging, which is completely wasted if not disposed of properly. 80% of a vehicle can be recycled. Aluminium cans can be recycled completely and put to use in a very short time. Thousands of glass jars and bottles are thrown away every year that may be reused again. 
Glass is 100% recyclable. Okay, so with that, we have come to the end of this presentation. Again, I'm going to repeat, go and read your study guide. Make sure that you are well informed about every aspect in your study guide. With this said, I want you to wish you the best of luck with your assignment as well as the examinations. Thank you.